This week, the makers of Comfy UI uh, released their own Run Comfy competitor, which is called Comfy UI in the Cloud. Um, I use Run Comfy as the example because, as many of you who have probably watched my videos know, like that's the tool that I tend to recommend people use. Because for most people, Comfy UI is not accessible. Either you don't have a Linux or Windows machine, you don't have your own high-powered GPU, you don't want to manage all the intricacies of Comfy UI. So, uh, and that's what Comfy UI in the cloud is meant to do, right? It's meant to sort of simplify a lot of that stuff. So I want to spend maybe 10, 15 minutes just talking about sort of my first experience with Comfy UI in the cloud, some of the limitations, but more importantly, the pricing, which is amazing. Like... I have to say, I'll just front load like TLDR, like it's worth it, at least as of right now, because the cost is so low. Um, so it is $20 a month as of this recording. With that comes uh, $10 in API credits. We'll talk about API credits in a minute, but essentially that means you're $10 a month and you get more or less like, I've yet to hit a limit. So you get A100s for, it seems like many hours a day. Um, which is crazy. Uh, $10 an hour on Runcomfy UI probably gets you a couple hours, and that's it. So um, I think this is aggressive pricing for them to launch in the market. I don't think this price is going to last. Um, so maybe use it while, it's, while you can, um, and we'll kind of see where the pricing goes. So at, uh, to run this, you just go to launch Comfy, Comfy Cloud from here, from comfy.org uh, comfy slash cloud. Um, I'll drop the link in, in the notes. Um, but yeah, that's how it works. You'll need to create an account. You'll need to set up uh, a Stripe payment. So it is 20 bucks a month. You'll set that up as a recurring payment, and then you can go and have at it. There are a number of differences between Comfy UI Local and Comfy UI in the cloud. I will cover some of those here. The main one is that there's less customizability. Um, and some of that might change over the next couple months, um, next couple weeks even. I'm not sure. Um, they're not entirely like clear about what the future roadmap is for Comfy Cloud. Um, so be aware of some limitations, and we'll talk about some of them while we go through this. Uh, you can see on this price or on the pricing page, as well as the main information page, um, there is some differences. So uh, one of the main things is you only have access to A100s, based on what I can tell. Um, A100s are pretty great, but they're not H100s. So if you are doing a lot of video work, and you need the most powerful, fastest machines, and you have a lot of budget, this is not going to be for you. A100s are still like pretty good. I've yet to really run into an instance where I can't use them, but there are some issues there. The two main things that I would say are limiting compared to Comfy UI as its own local instance, local install, um, and the difference between how Run Comfy works um, is you cannot, as of today, up upload your own models. Meaning if you are uh, commonly training LoRa models yourself or you like using LoRa models from other sites, Civitai, other Pugging Face sites, today they do not allow uploading your own models. Now, it does say here that that is coming soon. I don't know what soon means. It could be tomorrow. It could be a month from now. But So if custom models are your thing, which is what I do a lot for my classes, um, it is not yet available. The other thing is their custom nodes options are pretty limited. So if you like to work with, like, say, the Kajai nodes um, and you like the latest and greatest, I don't think those are yet available through this tool. Again, this might change in the future. They might make uh, the custom node options more expansive. They might not. I'm not entirely sure. Um, so this is a challenge, and one of the things that you will probably find is that if you are making your own custom workflows in local Comfy UI and you want to drag them into the Comfy UI in the cloud system, you'll likely have some node dependency issues. And in some cases, that may not be solvable. There is no manager, as I can tell, in Comfy UI in the cloud. And we can just take a look at what, what happens here. So this is what Comfy Cloud looks like. It's very, very similar to the Comfy UI that we all know and have used before. The difference is here, as you'll see here on the right-hand side, or sorry, on the left-hand side, we've got a node library. Um, you will see that not every node that you want to use is available here. These are sort of the bigger ones. But like you'll not you're not gonna see all of Kajai's like wrapper nodes here. They're just gonna support the regular comfy official wrappers for video and those sort of things. Um, but Kajai nodes are here. Uh, some of the other bigger players are here. Um, Impact Pack. Um, oh, one video wrapper is here. So again, maybe they're picking and choosing what they want. Um, IP adapter, anime diff. So you get a lot of the classic ones. Um, but if there are custom ones you want, those do not exist here, as I can tell. Uh, let's see, new folder, um, test. 
I don't know. I don't know if I can drop anything in there. Um, this is worth testing a little bit more here. Um, but as of now, like at least based on what they're telling me here on their uh, description page, you can't really add custom stuff. That might change in the future, but at least as of now, we that is the uh, option. So uh, that covers some of the the nodes. You'll also see the models. I don't actually know how you even use these as of now. I don't see a way to like, like you select one of these and it doesn't really drop it on the page or anything. So I think it's just to show you what models are currently available. This is kind of like a replacement for the um, model manager in the ComfyUI manager system. Um, but you will see that like some of this stuff is just knowledge and information, but not necessarily usable uh, directly through these systems. I think the main use case for this is if you go to something like templates, these are for people who are maybe learning Comfy UI for the first time or not doing a lot of custom work. And you'll see here that quite frequently there's just these templates. And this is what's great about this system is uh, when you load one of these in, like let's say we want, uh, let's do one 2.2 animate. Um, since I know this is an open source model, the other ones are closed source. I'll show those in just a minute. But for open source, you can click on one of these. And you'll see here immediately like all of the options with these tools. So this is 122.14b. Um, this uses, I think it uses lightning models. Yes, no? Yeah, li lightning are, are here as well. Um, and this is a uh, reference image and a original video. Um, so this is doing uh, a couple of different things. But you'll see like... The great thing about this tool, I've, I play with this a bunch all day today, is um, these models load fast. If you're used to using Comfy UI, you know that often one of the biggest challenges is loading models. The first time takes 10, 15 minutes with some of these massive models. I think the way Comfy has structured this is that these models are preloaded on all of the hardware that they run on. And maybe they're doing something like based on the workflow you're using, they're sending it to a particular uh, GPU rig that is already pre-installed, has everything set up. So it loads fast, which is great, because um, that is often one of the biggest challenges with like loading a new workflow. Like if I'm going to run Comfy and I want to start a brand new workflow, I have to add 10 to 15 minutes to my first pass just to load all the models. That does not happen here, and that's a really great benefit of this. Um, the other thing about this pricing, which again, as far as I can tell, they'll more or less let you run it all day. Um, I've heard people say that it's eight hours a day. I haven't tried to hit that limit because that's kind of insane to try. Um, but I've ran it for four or five hours today uh, pretty continuously and didn't hit any limits. Um, well, there is one limit, which is that your individual runs cannot last longer than 30 minutes. For most people, that's never going to happen. Um, I even tried the one fourteen um, two two fourteen b without the lightning loras turned on, which means a video, a five-second video generation takes about 20 minutes. It ran for 20 minutes. I had no problems. I could probably play with like making longer frame versions of this and see if I can pass that 30 minute limit. Most people are not going to hit that 30 minute limit. I have in the past, but on slower hardware, again, loading models might take a long time, but in this use case, it's a lot less of an issue. Um, so in general, I think the 30 minute limit is totally fine and totally fair, and most people probably won't be hitting it. But it is a limit if you're doing some long video to video rendering on, you know, one two two, and you need it to be 400 frames plus um, interpolation. That's going to take longer than 30 minutes, and you won't be able to do that here. This tool isn't for those people. You already have a local install. You already have an API. You're already using RunPod. You're paying for that work, um, and you know you need it. And this isn't for you yet. Maybe they will in the future. We'll open that up. The other cool thing um, with this is, so it's 20 bucks a month, and that's already a steal. If you use it four hours a day, um, getting an A100 for four hours a day for the next month, that's a huge, huge cost savings. And I'm sure that price is only temporary. I don't think they can lose that much money on this overall. This is for them to do beta testing, that sort of thing. So I realistically think that that price will not last, but we'll see how long it does last. So if you are interested and you, this is the right use case for you, I definitely recommend getting in and playing with it now. Um, as a part of that $20 a month, you also get $10 in API credits. So if I come here, I can see that I have already run a couple of different API nodes. They call them partner nodes. It basically means using APIs that are not open source. That is stuff like Sora, VO, 125. Um, there's probably other ones, but those are maybe the bigger ones that most people know. It comes with $10 of credits every 20, every month, which means you're basically spending 
you're getting 10,000 free credits given to you for API nodes. And then you're only spending $10 a month for A100 access, which is insane. Like that is crazy. And again, there's no way that they can keep this up. But for the next, I don't know, couple weeks, maybe as they do beta testing, like you get to use that and have a lot of fun. So um, if you are a common comfy user, but maybe you have limits where like your hardware is a little slow, um, but you're using it really frequently, or maybe you're just interested in playing with comfy UI for the first time because there were other barriers to entry for you, like costs on run comfy or other things, then this is totally worth it. It's totally worth to sign up for it. I have yet to find the limitations to be that limiting. Um, like if I'm just playing around, then I'm glad I'll gladly spend 10 bucks a month to just like have access to a fire hose of comfy UI tools. For example, um, so let's talk about the, the partner nodes. If you go to your templates here, um, you'll see stuff like Sora 2 is available here. So if I click on Sora 2, this will open. You have the option here to upload an image. You have the option here to run text to video um, directly as is. The nice thing about this is it does give you a little price here at the top. So this says 80 cents per run. That is a 720 by 1280 video for eight seconds. And I can just run this. So um, you will see there, there are some supports here for different sizes. Um, pricing for Sora is so-so. I don't know. Did I see VO here? Let's see. Let's type in VO. Doesn't look like VO is supported here. Maybe it will be in the future. But in general, Sora is pretty good. The WAN 2.5, I would say WAN 2.5 has been a shockingly good model for me. So WAN 2.5 um, text image. And there's also there's also our text to video models. You can try it again. WAN 2.5 uh, text to video. So we can just grab this one and let's just put in a prompt here. Um, so we'll just say uh, flower spinning in a portrait studio. You'll see my price here is set to 75 cents per run. That's because I'm using 1080p video at 16 by 9. I could do 720 at 3 at 4.3, and that would be 50 cents per run. Um, audio doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect the price here. Um, I've got some other stuff here that I can play with. So, for example, I could play a length. Like if I want a 10-second video, you'll see the price doubles. If I want an 8-second video, you'll see the price. Can I do 8? Apparently, I cannot. I can only do 5 and 10. So five seconds is 50 cents. Um, a 10 second video is double that price. And the nice thing about these is you're not even using, I don't think you're even using Comfy UI's um, GPUs unless you're attaching it to another model. Um, so we'll mute the audio here, control M, and I'm just gonna hit run. And it does look for a machine. Um, I've yet to have it say there's no machines available. Maybe this week, as people learn how great of a price this is, um, there might be more usage and we might run into issues of queuing or like just waiting for machines. But so far, I've yet to hit that. Um, I will say there's another limit here, which is that you can only run one workflow at a time. So you can only run this when I, if I say, want to go to this one and I want to generate a video, um, first frame, last frame. If I hit run here, this is going to queue and it's not going to run until this other one finishes. That's fine with me. So basically you only have access to one GPU at a time. I can live with that. Like at the pr again, at the price, I can live with all these things. Um, if the price were to increase to a certain point or I'm paying per hour or whatever it is, like maybe that's a different thing. The other thing I love about this compared to Run Comfy, you know like this is the thing I always harp on about Run Comfy. You have to remember to turn on and off your machine. With this, there's no on and off. It's literally just like, let it run. When it finishes running, they decommission the machine. When you run another one, it finds another machine for it. It's really nice. You don't need to worry about your hourly rate because you're paying a flat rate. You don't need to worry about like GPU assignment. Like, do I want an A100 for this project? Do I want a T4 for this project? Do I want an H100? Like, you get A100s and that's it. Uh, so overall, I think there's just a ton of really good things here. Things that are missing here is there's no file system. So I think the only way to download these files is to leave your machine open and to download a file from here. Maybe other people are finding that like there's session persistence or something. Um, I just sort of leave it open and grab from my queue, but that seems to work fine. But there is no file system, um, so you can't upload files. You, you can only download files. I don't know how long these files persist for. 
Maybe they're always attached to your account. I was trying to find where I can see this in my user settings. Um, I don't see any asset folder here. Um, yeah, so there there are definitely limits to this tool, and it's clearly in beta, meaning there will be maybe some updates in the very near future. I don't know how frequently they're going to update stuff. I don't know what their plan is for the beta. Again, I don't know what future pricing here is. But in general, the pricing is worth it. Like if you get this for the next month and you only have to spend 10 bucks to get an A100 pretty much whenever you want, that's so amazingly worth it that even if it only lasts a month, you can get a lot of benefit out of it and a lot of use out of that. So overall, I think it's worth um, for anyone that's comfy curious or has some um, previous experience with comfy, like to give it a shot. Pricing is ridiculous and I do not expect it to last. I've said that like five times now, but I really mean it. So give it a shot if you want to. Um, for people still in my video class right now, this is not yet like workable. But if you know you like one 2.2 first frame, last frame, and you just want to play a bunch there, like that is totally usable in here. You can't use Laura's. You can only use the the turbo models that, that come pre-installed with it. But for a lot of you, that's probably fine. Um, so I think for a majority of people using this use case, you can have a ball with this tool and learn a lot of Comfy UI and explore different tools at a very affordable price. So while the price is what it is, I recommend people jump on it. When that changes, I don't know, I'll record another video complaining or not complaining, um, we'll see. So yeah, at least for now, um, as of early November, highly recommend checking this out. Highly recommend playing with it, but also recognizing there are some limits to it as it is still a public beta. Okay, uh, that's it for this video. Um, let me know how you're using this, if I got anything wrong, because I very likely did. Um, and I will see you next time.